Welcome back to the Payne's Creek Killings. We've just come from the sewers into the basement of the hospital, so it's time to try to turn on the power and see what's down here. And also, I was taking a look at this pendant again, and I realized something that I missed. On the very bottom of it, you see it says, I think, M to S. Which I'm assuming means this is from Matthew to Sophia. So I'm thinking this is probably, I mean, we don't have anything that's password protected from Sophia. So it's probably a password for Matthew. And I can't remember if we ever unlocked Matthew's desk or not. I'm not sure. So maybe this is Matthew's desk code? If we haven't. I'm just going to note that here. Password uh, from M to S. Password for Matthew's desk. I hope the morgue is locked. Ah. <sighs> I hope these don't open. Thank God they don't. Whoa. What the fuck? Two keys, a wallet, and bloodstain. Um, what happened here? Forceful drawer. Gonna look everywhere but down there first. Alright. So who is this? Stephen Moss. Wait, did we not find his wallet in his car? Was that not his wallet or his driver's license? Was that, was that just like the investigator's ID, I think? Class D. Organ donor. Expires at the end of this year, actually. It's back in 1997. I called Dorothy last... Wait, this can't be from Stephen Moss, right? Uh, I called Dorothy last week. She told me something interesting about Sophia. It was a puzzle that she received from Matthew when she first started working at the mansion. Sort of a birthday gift for her. In that puzzle, Sophia was to visit both hers and Matthew's favorite locations in Paines Creek. In each location lies a clue that Matthew had written on the wall of the building exterior. The clues, when put together, will point her to the, to the location of her gift. I thought that was a neat idea. Sophia's favorite places. Anne's Courtyard and in Suites. Bridge, over the stream by the gate entrance and post office. Why would someone like the post office? And where can I find Matthew's favorite places? Oh, I guess this is from Stephen Moss. I forgot, what time did Stephen Moss come here? Because all this blood and everything looks fresh. But it must have been a while ago, right? Ah, uh, I don't know. Okay, so... I mean, I think I found one of those numbers on the exterior of the church, right? The thing I used to unlock the red box in the tree stump? But apparently when you put all of them together will point her to the location of her gift. If you have to put all of them together, then why did that one number 
sort of lead me to the red box. I'm not sure. I definitely have to investigate this. I received an anonymous telegram this morning. In it, wrote that Scott wasn't Vivian's killer. Unfortunately, that's all I got. I had my doubts whether Scott really killed Vivian. He sure had the motive, but upon reading all his diaries and looking through his investigation notes, I can't help but think that Scott didn't kill Vivian. On the contrary, he was trying to find out who killed Vivian as well as what really happened to Andrew Reed and Dr. Johnson. I still don't know if this anonymous person is a man or a woman, but it did help solidify my thoughts on Scott. I received another telegram yesterday telling me to look into Bernard, the mansion's butler. I can't help but feel that this person is trying to tell me something, but not exactly what. The telegram said I will find something in the house. Today I received a key in the mail with the initials BH. Does it stand for Bernard's house? I searched everywhere and read all of Bernard's diaries. Something just doesn't add up. Maybe it's just a hunch or simply that I'm thinking too much, but would he have really killed Vivian? However, there's something else in his diaries that made me wonder if he was indeed a murderer. I photographed all the pages with <laughs> with one L. All. Okay, so maybe this explains why Andrew's safe in his house was open when I got there. I'm not sure why there was still stuff inside of it, but... I, I don't know if perhaps... Stephen Moss... I'm, I'm thinking Stephen Moss almost certainly opened the safe. The question is, did Stephen Moss take some things out? And keep them kept out? Or did they just take pictures of the stuff and then put it back in? You know, was there something missing? I don't know. So if Stephen Moss received a key to Bernard's house, then what key did I get to Bernard's house? I forgot where I even got that key. Hmm. Yeah, looks like Stephen was realizing some of the things I've kind of already realized, which is that Bernard almost certainly didn't kill Vivian. I mean, we know Bernard loved Vivian. Pretty sure Bernard killed Andrew though, right? Or was it Andrew? I forgot. I'll come back to it later. Once I have to bring everything together, kind of more towards the end, I'll start bringing all these threads together and reminding me of what happened. Take a picture of that. Okay, so let's add a note here. I guess this will be a to-do, so, um, Stephen Moss's diary mentions that Matthew played a game with Sophia about favorite places and secret messages. Find them all to lead you to your prize. Stephen Moss, Sophia, and Matthew. Alright, so what have we got here? BH. Well, it's obviously not the house key. I mean, the house key was far bigger, wasn't it? So maybe that's... A, wasn't there a locked door inside of Bernard's house? So maybe that's for one of the inside doors. Or it could be something entirely different. What else could BH stand for? Don't know. But for now, I'm just going to assume it's... Um, I have a key for one of Bernard's... Interior doors. And what about this one? Looks like a briefcase key! Ah, oh, yes! Hey, 
Okay, looks like that's it. Is, is that a hammer? Oh my god. I feel like the entire world has just opened up to me. I have so many keys. I'm pretty sure I know what this is a password for. I've got two keys and I know probably where they go. This one definitely, this one probably. Now I've got a hammer, which means I can pull up the floorboards in Bernard's house. And maybe this could even be used to open up the stuck drawer in Wanda's house. Oh, beautiful. Electrical room. Was that it? No. Oh. There we go. Where are the lights? This doesn't make any physical sense. <laughs> There's no light fixtures. What? Alright. Wait a minute. BF. Basement floor? Could that be related to BH? I'll have to see what the others say. Probably not, but... I don't know. Maybe? Whoops. Okay. Yeah, this one just says one, so no, I don't think BH is related to it. Elevator still doesn't work, so had nothing to do with power. Okay, so the big place that I could not go before in the hospital because of the power issue was... Uh... I keep forgetting his name. The doctor's place. Johnson, um... Henry Johnson. While we're here, though, I can clean up one of the kind of to-dos I have, which someone mentioned that I did not look at the other pages of the visitor's book. So just to refresh my memory, what I had noticed here, um, right, the one that stood out to me, or the two that stood out to me, is Matthew Brooks visiting Trisha. Matthew visited Trisha again, three times. This could be important these dates and addresses. Why is my camera's sound so deep? Is it normally higher pitched than that? It's odd. But yeah, this could be important for cross-referencing with dates of like when Trisha died. Which I still don't know yet. I swear that was higher pitch. So let me get rid of that to do. Oh, there we go. That one. So where was that office? Here it is. Medical texts. 
Can't push and pull them to find a secret room, though. Wait. When did Henry Johnson die? It's a newspaper art article about it, right? Yeah. Wait, what? He died July 12th, 1995. This award is just like the... the Vivian Roberts one. The rewards are for 1997? Two years after they died? The hell? That must be... that must be uh, just a mistake. All sorts of accolades. Um... Okay, apparently they sent... Henry Johnson duplicates of this one. Just wanted to make sure in case one got ruined. Or something. Huh. Henry, I just received a letter from the NMB investigation firm regarding the use of the RRF funds. I need you to call me. Henry, we really need to talk. Please call back. What's going on, Henry? Why aren't you returning my calls? This is really important. First time I've heard a voice in forever. Yeah, so we know that Vivian had hired a private investigator and found that Henry Johnson was... I'm not sure what the right word would be. Taking funds out of something that was meant for charity. The Roberts Foundation or whatever is it stated somewhere here? Roberts Relief Foundation. Yeah. So, he was stealing money from that. Vivian found out. And I don't think it's much of a stretch to say that Vivian, I'm thinking probably blackmailed Henry Johnson, perhaps to get him to um, allow her to poison Magdalene to get him to write the Super strong prescription and all that. Thinking that might be how Henry Johnson got caught up in all this. Vivian Roberts. May 29th, 1993. To Dr. Henry Johnson. Oh, and there's Henry Johnson's address. Is it at the hospital, though, or just his house? I don't know. Um, Dear Dr. Henry Johnson, I would like to thank you for your contribution to the Paines Creek Community Hospital and the people of Paines Creek for the past two decades. However, there are reports regarding mishandled funds at the hospital, most of which came from the Roberts Relief Funds to support your medical supplies and equipment purchases. Since the total sum is calculated to be almost 160000 we have no other choice except to do an open investigation. Until you are able to explain the discrepancy between your accounting and ours, I have no choice but to suspend all funding for the hospital for the time being. I will be meeting you and your accountant to solve this issue so we may continue to support the hospital's needs. Room 203. Isn't... I think that's Trisha's room, isn't it? Trisha? Yeah. Why did Henry Johnson have her key specifically? That's a bit suspicious.
Charles Roberts, I don't know if it's a joke that you sent me the threat letter, but if you knew about the well, then you must have found out the truth. Just so you know, your wife was the one behind all of it. If you have any grudge, it's with her, not me. I was just a witness in Sophia's death. Nothing more. Henry Johnson. June 30th, 1995. Fax it tomorrow. Did it ever get faxed? Oh, it's this. That must be the threat letter. I know what you did. Meet me by the well at midnight. Do you know which one? Come alone. Oh, it... Oh. Oh, shit. So... We saw this. We saw this specifically in the tea room. Which I'm pretty sure means that Vivian sent it. Henry Johnson seems to be under the impression that it's Charles who sent it, but it was Vivian. Vivian's acting like, yeah, I know what you did, meet me by the well at midnight, but Vivian was with there with Henry Johnson when Sophia died. So she's, she's pretending to be someone who found out the truth when it was just Vivian all the while. So, Vivian was trying to kill Henry Johnson, huh? That's the impression I get. So is Vivian the one who ended up killing him and putting him in the bottom of the lake in his car? If so, how? I mean, that seems awfully hard to stage that. A car in the river? Don't know, but I'm gonna write that down. Henry Johnson received a threat letter saying to meet him by the well. Johnson believed this to be from Charles, but it was Vivian since we found the threat in her tea room. So Vivian killed Johnson. Strange, when I turn off my flashlight, it's like two lights get turned off. In stages. It's like one and then another. It's like bloop bloop. Just checking around for Sophia, no big deal. Let's see, I guess the next thing in the hospital would be Trisha's room. was already open. Don't think it means anything, but I'm not sure if I've seen that before. November 16th, 1995. Scott Brooks' body found by Jogger with multiple stab wounds to the heart. So finally, we see something about Scott's death. Police unsure if events are tied to the killing of Vivian Roberts. Scott Brooks, the murder suspect on the Vivian Roberts case, was killed yesterday. His body was found on the roadside along Maple Drive. At around 6.50 a.m., a jogger happened to see a body lying motionless on the side of the road behind the brush while doing his morning run. Or sorry, behind the, behind the bush, not brush. Same thing, I guess. He stopped to check if the person needed help, only to notice that the body was covered in blood. He immediately called 911. Police arrived shortly at around 7 a.m. and the victim was pronounced dead. Time of death was predicted to be about four to six hours ago, putting the time of death between 1 a.m. and 3 a.m. 
Questions have been raised pertaining to the murder of Vivian Roberts, especially since Scott was released from prison due... something something. Huh. Okay. Um... I don't know when Trisha died, but I think it stands to reason that if this was in her room, then she probably read this, and maybe this is what triggered her to, I'm assuming, jump off the roof or something like that. Well, this date is going to be important. November 16th. I've got to cross-reference that with other people's journals and stuff to see if anything matches up to see who killed Scott. Because at this point, I really don't know who killed Scott. Another key? Oh, yes. A room key. A room key for the mansion? Because there's nothing in Trisha's room that can be unlocked. See if this illuminates it. Oh. Oh, this is Dorothy's journal. So that must be a room key for Dorothy's place. And I was thinking, Dorothy might be the person who cleaned Oliver's photography, so that might be what's going to lead there. Well, before I go any further, let me note that down. I have uh, got a key from Trisha's room. I think it's for an interior door in Dorothy's house. All right, let's see what this says. July 27th, 1995. Yesterday, upon hearing that Scott was being apprehended for the murder of Vivian, Trisha collapsed. The hospital called this morning to inform us that it's just a nervous breakdown. They suggested that she would, uh, she should stay in the hospital for at least a few days. Charles has asked for me to take care of Trisha. August 3rd. It rained today. Trisha hates the rain. She stayed in bed, tucked away under the blanket the whole time. Sometimes she would say Scott's name out loud, then cry herself to sleep. It pains me to see her like that. August 22nd. Charles visits Trisha almost every day. Today, he was quieter than usual. All of a sudden, he said that Vivian has been seeing another guy, apparently a banker, for more than a year, and asked if Vivian ever talked to me about it. I said I didn't know anything about it, but was sure that Vivian would never do such a thing. Then I realized that Trisha was awake. I'm not sure if she heard our conversation. Wait, what? Vivian had been seeing another guy, apparently a banker. That's the first time I've heard anything about that. What about that? Oh, you know what? What about that person? You know? The person? Hold on, let's go to the notes. I'm not sure if they were a banker, but remember the person who organized Vivian's uh, art exhibition? It didn't say exactly who they were, but maybe they were a banker? And I know that they were mentioned by name specifically, and I was wondering what the significance of that could be, because it seemed like there wasn't much of a significance. Um, let's search for art. Yeah, being managed by Owen Smith. Perhaps Owen Smith is the banker? Dunno. September 8th. Sheriff Howard came today. He asked me if I remembered seeing anything suspicious the night Vivian died. I've already told him everything I know. It's frustrating to be asked over and over the things that I want to forget. Before he left, I asked if Scott could really be the killer. He said he's wondering the same thing. If Scott was not the killer, then who killed Vivian? September 16th. Derek came to see Trisha. I asked how he's doing. He said that the medical expenses for Wanda were more than he expected. Even with Charles' help, he still ended up using most of his savings and is now trying to get a second job. Then he asked me if there's a future for him. Traveling with Charles made him see the ugly sides of the world. His mom is hospitalized for terminal cancer, and seeing Trisha like this pains him. He then leaned towards Trisha and whispered, 
Would it be better if Scott is gone? Would you have chosen me? I wished I heard wrongly. Okay, maybe Derek killed Scott. Fucking hell. I would just like to point out that this town of Payne's Creek is like, was really fucked up. Dear God. Everybody was sleeping with everybody and Matthew was sleeping apparently or in love with his cousin and Scott and Trisha were unknowingly entering an incestuous relationship and it's just a whole lot of bad stuff. Um, Dorothy's journal mentions that Derek asked Trisha if it would be better if Scott was gone. Did he kill Scott? Scott was found with multiple stab wounds to the heart, and we did find Derek's knife in his room. He has a knife, not that that really proves much. I mean, ooh, he had a knife. And honestly, it was kind of a small knife. I mean, it was just a pocket knife, wasn't it? Got a lot of people to tag here. Dorothy. Derek. Trisha. And Scott. In fact, we have a picture of that knife. Yeah, that's so small, but I mean, you could absolutely stab somebody to death with that, no doubt. Hmm. Lots of storybooks. Well, I think we're done with the hospital, right? Now I've just got so many keys and so many things I can do. What to do next? So we got two things in Bernard's house. That's interesting. I think I'm gonna go to the church though. I wanna try this necklace out on Matthew's desk. Uh, Matthew's desk had already been opened. So the only locked thing at the church that requires a passcode is the box in the other confessional, the one next to the one that used Calvin's date of birth as the password. And there's also what I assume is Matthew's room that's locked, but that uses a key, not a password. And the confessional, by the way, takes six digits. This is only four. I was thinking maybe 0526 is the beginning of a date, and then the last two digits for the confessional might be a year. So I tried some dates around like 75 and a couple years below that, a couple years above that didn't work, so I'm not sure. Maybe it's for something inside of Matthew's room once I find a way in there. But anyway, we're in Dorothy's house. I do believe we have the key for here. Yes! The satisfying click of advancement. Pendant of Mother Mary. Daughter of ex mayor found dead at Payne's Creek Community Hospital. The hospital is now checking to see why the roof door was not locked. Investigation is still pending regarding Trisha's death. Okay, so, yep, that broken railing. Falls 40 feet from rooftop, lands on head, and dies. I don't... I don't think it's actually 40 feet. At all. From the roof to the floor, I feel like it's more like 20 feet. But anyway, that's besides the point. 
Yesterday morning, the body of Trisha Roberts was found on the grounds of Paines Creek Community Hospital. She was pronounced dead at 7.20 a.m. According to Miss Thompson, she was starting her morning shift when she heard some sound near the reception area. She went out to find Trisha lying motionless. Blood was flowing out from her head. She quickly called for Dr. Bennett, the attending physician for the day's morning shift, who brought Trisha to the emergency room at once. Unfortunately, it was too late. The hospital CCTV shows that Trisha Roberts was walking around the hospital at around 6.30 a.m. She headed to the roof at 6.54 a.m. A few minutes later, her body was found on the ground three floors below. Charles Roberts, ex-mayor and father of the deceased, ends there. Yesterday morning. Okay, so... Trisha died December 26th, 1995. I should note dates of death, probably. Trisha died December 20... What was it? 26th. 1995. Jumped? Question mark. Off hospital roof. Again, with the whole broken railing, I suspect she was maybe pushed or something. But it also is very plausible that she would jump off the roof after everything that had been happening. Christ, with Vivian and Scott and everybody. Which reminds me, I should note the date of death for Scott. Yeah, so that's just a bit before Trisha died. I mean, not that much before, it's more than a month. Like six weeks or so. So when was this exactly? Killed yesterday, so November 15th. November 15th, 1995. October 27th, 1995. Scott was released from prison this morning. Matthew went to pick him up. There's tension here in Payne's Creek. Most people think of Scott as a murderer. Charles tried to stop Trisha from seeing Scott, but it's no use. She's already waiting for him at the cabin. November 6th. Charles is drinking again. He couldn't stop Trisha from trying to see Scott, yet Scott seemed to be avoiding her. Trisha should not have been discharged from the hospital. She still needs help and rehabilitation. November 14th. Wait, wait, hold on. Before I even read this, November 14th, that's the day before Scott was killed. Derek and Scott fought at the market today. They used to be such good friends. Derek asks Scott why he's avoiding Trisha. Scott didn't say anything. He just walked away. Derek told him not to come back anymore. It's sad to see what's happening to them now. The day after. Oh my god, Scott was killed? <laughs> Who... That just seems like a strange thing to write in your diary. December 2nd. Trisha's been going crazy ever since Scott died. She would sometimes scream in the middle of the night. Other times she'd be asking why Scott hasn't visited her for a while. No one seems to know how to answer her without agitating her condition. December 6th. Trisha is finally being admitted to the hospital for mental breakdown. Charles did not know what to do. I've asked for his permission to take care of Trisha at the hospital until she recovers. Charles appreciated my help. Okay, so we need to note that. Day four, Dorothy's journal mentions that Scott and 
Derek fought at the marketplace. Dorothy, Derek. Confirmed, no dartboard. Oh, Sophia! This must be what the pendant is for. So there is something of Sophia's to unlock. Yeah, because Dorothy took care of Sophia. Ooh. A house key? For what? Mysterious. Oliver Photo Lab cleaning. Is that the Oliver Photo Lab key? I'm not sure why it'd be called a house key because it's not really a house, but I think that's it. I have a key for Oliver's or Oliver's, whatever that is. I'm not sure how it's spelled or pronounced exactly. Oliver's Photo Lab. Do I have a tag for Oliver's photo lab? Not that I need it for this, but I will at some point. I don't. I'm just gonna go Oliver's. I have so many keys and so many leads right now, I feel so good. January 18th, 1996. This is quite late. Dear Dorothy, As you are preparing to leave Payne's Creek, I want to express my heartfelt gratitude for all these years that you've done for me. Uh, you've done for me by taking care and cleaning my store. I would be lying if I said that I'm not saddened by your departure. Having said that, I wish you all the best in your new place. Do invite me there once you've settled in. May God be with you. Best regards. Oliver. Gibson, I think. So yeah, this is when everybody was, I guess, probably starting to leave Payne's Creek. I imagine, because that's after Scott and Trisha and Vivian died and all that. Not that far after it, though. I mean, January 18th, 1996. That's only two or three weeks after Trisha died. I think that's it aside from the lockbox. Okay. So, lockbox password, or pendant password rather, 0526. Yes! Is that Sophia's diary? Oh my god. Feels like a rare and precious thing. So, what do we... I wish I could get a better look in there. Some sewing stuff. Like to sew, I guess? March 8th, 1975. Dear Sophia, how have you been? I hope everyone is treating you well at the mansion. It's been six months since my missionary work started here in Indonesia. Life here is hard, but meaningful. I thought my life at the orphanage was miserable, but after coming here, I realized I am blessed more than I could ever imagine. I am supposed to be back in one week's time, but have decided to extend my stay here for another six months. Oh, so this must be Matthew. I haven't been receiving your letters much these days. I hope you're doing well. Remember the time when we were at the orphanage, you said that you don't want to be poor anymore. I think God heard your call and brought you to Payne's Creek. Charles and Vivian told me they were glad I introduced you to them. They said you are a hard-working person with a kind heart, and that us being related was not the reason they hired you. 
You got the job on your own merit. I did not know whether or not to tell them we are not actually cousins. I feel bad for lying to them. Having said that, I'm glad that you're in Payne's Creek. We can talk and meet any time, just like the good old days at the orphanage. I guess I'll have to tell them the truth someday. I will do my best here. I hope you can wait for me. Best regards, Matthew. P.S. I prepared a special present for your birthday. Wait for my telegram that day. Okay, so they aren't actually cousins. Huh. So they were both from the orphanage? And what? I, I don't exactly get what happened with them at the orphanage. Well, that is worth a note. Uh, so Matthew is not actually related to Sophia. So like, were they both at the orphanage? Like, were they both orphans themselves? And they banded together and he like took her under his wing or something and pretended that they were related for some reason? I, I don't know enough about that to come to any conclusions. So I'll just stick with this. Sophia Miller. August 6th, 1974. I know some people don't like me. Wanda always picks on me and Bernard ignores me most of the time. Andrew, well, he's okay as long as I'm not in his garden. Dorothy cares a lot for me though. I like her. Tom, our security guard, treats me with respect even though I'm just a housemaid. Vivian and Charles are kind to me. Oh, and Matthew too. I almost forgot about him. He's been taking care of me since I could remember. I'm a lucky girl. October 20th. Matthew talks to me whenever he has time. Sometimes I feel he's trying to escape his chores at the church. We would talk about everything under the sky, our hopes, our dreams, and our future. It reminded me of our days at the orphanage. December 29th. Landing a job here as a maid is the best thing that could have happened to me. However, I never imagined I would be having an affair with a married man, let alone my employer. Now I'm carrying his child. How do I face Matthew? March 15th, 1975. I received a letter from Matthew today saying that he'll be extending his stay in Indonesia for six more months. That has always been him, wanting to help people to live a noble life. I miss him. But I'm glad he decided to extend his stay there. It gives me time to prepare um, how I should explain my situation to him. I don't know how he will take it if he knows the truth. March 18th. I received a telegram this morning from Matthew wishing me a happy birthday. He told me he had a special birthday present prepared for me. All I need to do is find the clues he placed in both our favorite places. And when I've solved it, he'll be waiting for my telegram. I've actually solved it, but I don't know what to say to him. What should I do? June 1st. My baby is born today at 8.20 a.m., and it's a boy. He looks just like Charles. Dorothy's taking good care of us. She prepares the food and attends to my needs. I could almost feel like I'm her boss. Charles visits me all the time, asking if we need anything else. I told him he didn't have to come so often and instead focus on work. As a mayor, he must have a lot on his mind. June 16th. Charles told me today that his mom, Magdalene, will be arriving in two weeks. She knows about our relationship. I feel nervous because she's a strict woman. At the same time, I'm happy because she told Charles to take responsibility for me and my son. Soon, I won't have to be a maid anymore. Charles decided to name our child Vincent Roberts. I like that name.
Ah, Sophia. When did Sophia die exactly? I wonder how soon it was after this June 16th. Also, June 1st, 1975, so that's the birth date and exact time of Scott. Let's see how close that is to what I thought. Because we know when Calvin brought Scott to the orphanage. I was thinking that's probably the date of birth or close to it. So, let's see. Huh. So for some reason, I thought this was the date of birth of Scott. Also, this makes no sense. What? July 4th, then I have 7 slash 11? What? <laughs> Don't know why I wrote that. That's a bit strange. Anyway, it's um, June 1st. Okay, I think that's it for Dorothy's house. Well, I think that's a pretty good place to end this episode. So I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, I'm going to do... I really don't know what, there's so many different things I could do. But I'm going to pick one and go with it. <laughs>